So when you start dissecting an owl pellet, what you want to do is break it apart into smaller pieces. And sometimes it's real easy to do and sometimes it's not. What you want to do is try to take the ends and sort of wiggle it back and forth. And a lot of times it'll just start to come open. You want to be gentle with it because there's a lot of times bones in the middle of there. So you gently sort of pull it apart, you break it into smaller pieces, and you just keep doing that. So gently with like firm but gentle pressure. You want to pull apart until it kind of just gives way and it'll just pop apart when it does. And just start by breaking it up into smaller pieces. Don't worry about necessarily finding every bone at the very beginning. But like there are some bones and you just want to kind of just start by getting it into smaller pieces. You don't want to be real gentle with it because if you're too gentle right now it's just going to take you forever so you want to use a little bit of force but you don't want to really pull like you want to if you feel like like right now I feel there's a bone in there you don't want to snap the bone um, you want to just kind of gently keep working and working until it just kind of lets itself loose and just keep pulling it apart until you get pieces that are <clears throat> small enough to use and you can also then start to see some of the skulls come into play. Now, sometimes there's like a hard crust on the outside of here. Um, what you would do then is just take this. This is a dissecting needle. It's got a sharp tip to it. Uh, and just gently scratch the surface. And if you do it like enough, and just kind of keep going, it's a lot of times like when it's got a crust on it, this, do this one doesn't. But when it has a crust on it, it'll just gently sort of start to give way and feel soft underneath. And just go all the way around your owl pellet. And once you kind of loosen that up, then you can do what I did at the beginning and it'll just kind of come loose like that. So you want to keep breaking this up into smaller and smaller pieces until you come across a skull. Now like there, can't really see it real well, but that right there is a lower jawbone. So you want to especially pay attention to jawbones and skulls. Now I haven't found the skull that that belongs with yet, but oh, there it is. So that orange right there, those are incisor teeth. And that tells you that you've got a skull. And once you find a skull, you want to be really careful. Um, a lot of times what will happen is when the owls will kill their prey, they'll break the skull. They'll fracture the skull. These, these rodents have pretty thin bone in the skull and you want to kind of gently just get as much of that hair as you can out of there without damaging the bone. Now this one is damaged already. Um, there's nothing I could do about this. You can see the back part of the skull is missing. Right here there should be more bone. Uh, that's where the brain would be. That's all gone right now. And what's really important when you find one like this is you have to realize that the total length measurement isn't going to be useful because you don't have the total skull. So if you just measured from here to here, it might give you a certain total length. That's not what the length of the skull would be. That skull probably would go all the way back to here, and you can't guess at that. So skull length isn't a, a one you can use, which is why it's really important to try to keep these skulls together because skull length can be very, very useful in determining which particular kind of animal skull that you have. Um, but you want to kind of go and try to loosen things up. Here, it's not always a great idea to try to pull that out because sometimes that fur is what's holding the skull together. You just kind of have to get a feel for it by how stuck together everything is. And, and you know, if you see like a bunch of fractures in the skull, then you probably just want to leave it alone. But now this skull right here is clean. And now you can start doing stuff like looking at the teeth um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to focus very well on this, um, but you're going to start looking at those characteristics found in the dichotomous key. You're going to measure the length of the cheek teeth rows and how many molars it has, and particularly that last upper cheek tooth um, in that row is a real important characteristic to look at. Uh, you can't really see it very well here because this, when it's on video it doesn't give the resolution, but that last tooth is in the dichotomous key and they talk about it repeatedly there. So what you want to do is just go through the pellet, find as many skulls as, the, as, as you can, 
Now, in all likelihood, this lower jawbone came from that skull because they were right there together in the same section of the pellet. You can't necessarily assume that, but this lower jawbone, rodents have um, lower jawbones that are in two pieces. So unlike a human lower jaw, which all one piece, these are actually two-piece lower jawbones. So there's another piece that belongs here. This would go on one side of the lower jaw, and there'd be another piece that goes along on the other side of the lower jaw. Now, whether that's in here or not, remains to be seen and it might be in the same section it might not be in the same section but as you're doing this what you want to do is kind of gently press the fur like this is just a great big wad of fur here and you don't want to have to sit there and go through every little bit of that but now there's a bone um, and while these are not really useful bones um, this one looks to be uh, a humerus maybe um, the upper arm bone they can tell you maybe that there's more to, that you should be looking for in the pellet. Like if you've got a bunch of femur bones, that upper leg bone, and you've only got one skull, chances are there's more than one animal represented here, and you might want to go back and look a little bit more closely through your pellet. Now there's a lot of debris in this pellet, more than usual. This, um, you know, there's some grass mixed in here. Um, you know, this is just a piece of, of grass here, um, and sometimes that can get confused with you know, if you're not used to looking at these, you might think that's a bone just because it's stiff. But what you want to do is just kind of gently pull away the, the fur and kind of feel it sort of between your fingers where it kind of rub back and forth. If there's anything that feels hard, then you want to kind of investigate that a little bit further. <clears throat> and as you do, sometimes it turns out to be something useful, sometimes it isn't. Now, one thing you have to be careful of here is that some of the specimens that you're going to find, like this skull, uh, there are certain specimens, I'm not going to tell you which, but there are certain specimens the whole skull is no bigger than this right here. And so just, you, you know, you have to make sure that, like in a big section like this, you've got to delve into this a little bit more deeply and dig around and make sure that there's nothing small. Even even a piece of fur this small could hold a jawbone of, of, a, of a small one, for example. Um, so you want to kind of feel through there. That's all debris and a piece of grass. And I would, as you're doing this, separate the debris, the stuff that you know is debris, from the stuff that may or may not be debris. Now there's a, a, a leg bone right there. And then you're just kind of slowly going through this. Here's another skull. Okay, you can kind of see there's the, the eye socket right there. Uh, again, you want to be careful here as you clear away the fur knowing especially that there's a skull there. And sometimes the lower jaw bones will be held together with the skull by this matted fur. And you don't want to separate them if you don't have to, because if you can find the lower jaw bones that go with the skull, then it's going to be easier for you to identify for sure, well, that lower jaw bone came with this skull, and sometimes this, the, the upper part of the skull is missing teeth, and teeth are easily the most important feature on these. And so sometimes you can at least get some information from the lower jawbone um, and the teeth that are there. So you want to be as gentle as you can. Again, not wasting time. You know, I'm not wasting time here. I'm not being too delicate, but I'm being delicate enough that I can, you know, pull away this fur and still see what I'm, I'm after here. And again, the, the, the dissecting needle here can be useful. You just have to be very gentle with it because that dissecting needle is very sharp. It'll punch right through one of these skulls. It can snap bones pretty easily if you're not gentle. So, you know, you don't want to be paranoid, but you want to be reasonably gentle with these. And so here, in fact, I can see right now, I do have the two lower jaw bones here. You can see that orange is the teeth. Uh, and that's those are the two lower jaw bones you can see there from the front these are the two upper upper incisor teeth and these are the two lower jaws they're sort of pushed off to the side here uh, but those are definitely lower jaw low, jaw bones and then you just want to again be delicate uh, frankly your fingers are the best tool you have here uh, i don't even normally use gloves because i get a much better feel for what's inside there uh, these have all been sterilized anyway but I'm using the gloves just because I know you guys will be using gloves. So, um, But once you kind of clear that away, I'm not going to go through all the gory details here. I'm just going to try to get this hair loose here and show you kind of what an intact skull looks like, or reasonably intact skull, although it looks like the back end of this too is a little busted up. Um, like there, that, that should be solid bone the whole way across there, and that's all fur. So the back end of this skull is 
is beat up pretty badly too. Now sometimes the bone pieces are there and if you just leave the fur there it'll kind of keep everything together and you can still get a, a whole whole skull measurement. But once you get these lower jaw bones, you can just wiggle them and they'll just come loose. You see those two just came right, came loose. Set those aside and that'll allow you to get at the fur that's next to the skull and there now that those pieces come out in, in big chunks typically. And then what you end up with here and there's some looks like ribs mixed in for fun. Um, you know, the skeleton doesn't always stay together. In fact, it almost never stays together um, in these owl pelts. This thing has been through digestion inside the owl's stomach, and then the stomach just compresses everything that's there into a big wad. And so the fact that a lot of the stuff isn't together anymore isn't surprising at all. I have never, in all of the years that I've done this, I've seen thousands of owl pellets. I've never, ever seen an intact skeleton, complete intact skeleton. There's bits and pieces, and what you have to understand, too, if you watch the video that I, I posted earlier um, of the owl uh, regurgitating a pellet, they may regurgitate as many as two or three pellets in a single day, and so you aren't even guaranteed that all the parts of one animal end up in the same pellet. Part of it, and I see there, that's a don't do. I just accidentally pulled on here, and you pulled. I pulled the whole skull apart. There's nothing I can do at this point. Um, it's unfortunate that I did that because now I can't use the total skull measurement. Um, but the reality is I just, you know, when I was pulling that, that fur loose, the whole thing came apart. But at least I have this. And quite frankly, if you know what you're doing, all you should need is a single tooth. Um, if you know what the teeth are and you know which tooth is important, I can identify most of these just from looking at a single tooth. But again, now what you want to do is you want to set that aside with the jaw bones that it came from. Um, might even want to put that in a separate place like on your lab table um, and then you know you can kind of keep these things together and when you get done going through it you will have all the skulls and once you get all the skulls set aside then it's time to use the dichotomous key um, on the skulls. The dichotomous key if you read through it is just for the skulls um, so the other limb bones might tell you hey I should be looking for another skull maybe but they're not going to tell you much about what organism it came from. Um, I'm sure there are dichotomous keys that will tell you that, but not all of them will. So um, certainly this one is just about skulls and teeth. So um, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm not going to go through the whole owl pellet and bore you, but that's basically how I would go about um, dissecting the owl pellet, some little tricks and techniques that I use. Um, but don't be afraid to use your fingers. Your fingers are the best tools you have here and just use your sense of touch to realize, okay, that's a bone and then work gently wiggling it loose and that's the secret. Once you have those skulls, then get after it with the dichotomous key. See you tomorrow.